Okay. They have a wide variety of sounds. Scolding sounds, come hither sounds, sounds of surprise and shock. We could just see the beauty of a chicken, a chicken's personality, that they're not just in the barnyard. They're here for reasons. It is a beautiful, beautiful gift to us on this earth. press got a hold of it was rather rather scary to me because I have never had any experience with anything like this before. Your fame went very fast. I got calls from people from all over the country, talk shows, DJs. Uh, we went by satellite to Guam. We went by satellite to Australia, Nepal. It also wound up in Moscow. And I think there was a lot of interest at the story at this time because there were a lot of things that were going on that were not particularly pleasant in the media. The trial of O.J. Simpson was happening. Orenthal James Simpson, not guilty of the crime of murder. And I think people were just kind of fed up and needed a story that was homey and a Cinderella story, if you will, that did work out. <laughs> After she got some good, strong feathers and was back on her feet, I thought that she deserved a little better than just number seven. So we decided to call her Valerie for her Valor. <coughs> Queen Valor, maybe. I don't know. But Valerie it was. And she has responded to that name ever since. <laughs> When she went back into the coop, all those girls were astounded to see her. They all sort of crowded around, and it was like a town meeting. I mean, you know, everybody was talk, talk, talk. And, where have you been for a week? Let's hear where you've been, what you've been doing. You were gone quite a while. What, where, where were you? And tell us about it. Tell us about it. She said, well, I have had a real experience, let me tell you. And so Valerie, I guess, told them that she'd been in the house and things had been very nice and she was watching television and she had good meals and lots of love it was just delightful <laughs> there was a friend that i had here locally and she knew someone that was an animal communicator and so she called him and she asked him if he would be willing to ask valerie a couple of questions The first question is, when you were uh, frozen, had you been going down the tunnel with the light at the end? And if so, why did you come back? And so Valerie said to him, yes, indeed, I did go down the tunnel. I got pretty close to the end where the light was. And then I was told, you must go back. And I realized that I had been put on this farm, not just to lay eggs, but to prove to people that with love and with caring, miracles do happen. Mr. Olson was a real enjoyable man to talk to. I always made a special point to come by and see him because I was little. And I asked him how his chicken was, and he said, All good things got to come to an end. So I really never did know for sure what happened to the chicken. It was a strange episode. He was headless. Headless rooster. <laughs> that was how the story goes. Ha, 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 ha.
Headless chicken, bull. But proof is in the pudding. I went out and seen it two or three times. He was a great rooster. Once upon a time and a half, but it's kind of hard for anybody to believe. But it's true. Yeah, it is true. Back in the 40s, when my grandparents were running the farm, they raised fryer roosters, fryer hens, and they would slaughter a few of them at a time for their own use, and then they would sell them. My grandfather would chop the heads off, and my grandmother would start picking and cleaning the feathers. Well, he would just keep chopping and throwing them down there in a the pile, and they got to the end, and one still was alive walking around. Now he told me that, you know, on occasion one would get up and they'd flop around and maybe live for a few minutes, but they'd always go ahead and die. But they had one that didn't die. Any normal man had reached down, picked him up, and cut his damn head off again. But not only. He picked him up, stopped him from bleeding, and that was his headless chicken. And that was Mike. And after it had lived for two or three days and was getting along fine. Of course, neighbors started finding out about it, coming and seeing, and people started hearing about it. You get a six-pack of beer and go up there and you get to see the rooster. That's when I started thinking, boy, I'd like to have that. I'd seen a two-headed calf before at a fair, but not anything without a head. I mean, that's, that's impossible. A gentleman by the name of H.B. Wade had heard about it and he was in the business of promoting different things and he got in touch with my grandparents and convinced them there might be a little money made in it and taking it to sideshows and things like that. Mike was on exhibit in Salt Lake. Out in California was uh, shown in Phoenix. They showed him several times in Chicago. Florida, Atlanta, in New York, on the East Coast. They had dreams of making money off of this rooster. Seattle, Frisco, LA, on the West Coast. And paying the farm off and getting it out of debt and buying new farm equipment. And then I understand, now don't hold me to this, that it went overseas to England. He was a real rooster, though. He was he was real peppy and spoiled rotten after a few months. Nothing but the best for Mike because he was worth lots of money. <laughs> Mike had, other than being taken around to the sideshows, tried to live a normal life. When they still had him on the farm, they let him loose with the rest of the chickens. He would go out and try to prune himself with his head with his neck, really, because he didn't have no head like a chicken would. He would try crowing, which would more of a gurgling sound, the way my grandfather described it. They would feed him by hand, crack corn and through his esophagus, and used an old eyedropper to give him water. So he did require some attention, but pretty much lived like a normal chicken, even though he didn't have a head. I think Lloyd and Clara thought that they were in the money, that they were going to go off and uh, seek their fortune and retire off of this rooster. Mike drew a pretty good crowd at the sideshows, be it people that were just interested or thought it was a hoax. He had a lot of publicity about him and a lot of bad publicity too. My grandparents received a lot of hate mail after that Miracle Mike was published in the Life magazine. A lot of people thought it was cruel to keep him alive, that they should have just went ahead and finished the job and put him in the cooking pot. He was a healthy chicken all the time that he was around. 
but they still blamed Ole.